to the next topic of the day and something that obviously hits home for me being a you know a what would i say uh being a weekend dj in that regard in my experience um or from my walk of life this is definitely going to be something that's going to impact me so covid this is a headline from ITV it said COVID. Rishi Sunak says people in all walks of life are having to adapt for employment. And of course, the headline before that was people within the arts and entertainment will have to get another job or something along those kind of lines, right? Which has kind of been causing a bit of a stir on the whole DJ Twitter places and stuff. And people have naturally, you know, have, have a lot to say about it. And it's sobering, if not a little bit um, annoying, to say the least. And I think most people, most sensible adults out there have come to the realisation that we're going to be living with this virus for at least 18 months, right? I, I already specified at the beginning of this COVID when it spread, you can look back at some of my episodes from March. I said that this was going to last until the end of the year. I'm guaranteed or sure of it. There's no way countries and economies can shut down for a prolonged period of time and then restart up you know at a flick of a switch it's going to take six months uh, you know at best to get things up and running where they were prior and that's not even counting when you know the virus will sort of kind of you know wash its way through the population as trump would say or that we kind of get a vaccine so i always sort of specify that the earliest that things can get back to some level of normalcy will be the end of the year now it seems like we're going to head into the middle of the year especially in the uk but for more terms and purposes the probably safe assumption will be 18 months from march until whenever 18 months is so if that's the case i think most sensible adults have come to the realization that they're probably going to have to make some adjustments especially if they work within the entertainment industry because we were the first sector to close or hospitality industry we were the first sector to close due to the um, understanding that viruses especially airborne viruses spread um you know spread at best in closed environments where people are shouting perspirating and all that malarkey so naturally bars restaurants clubs and all that good stuff arenas would be the first things to close down now unfortunately i think that those places will also be the first places to or the last places to reopen once the economy does reopen that's the major issue that we have here at play so if that's the case then what rishi sunak is saying here shouldn't be that much of a surprise we shouldn't be that surprised by it whatsoever that he's saying all people in most life should be making adapt themselves to employment but unfortunately it, it's not a surprise unfortunately but it is something that's kind of hard to swallow it's a hard hard pill to swallow it definitely definitely is so this is the update from here it says the following um the chancellor suggested people in all walks of life should look to find new opportunities as he declined to provide further support for struggling workers amid the continuing coronavirus crisis. Rishi Sunak said, I can't pretend that everyone can do exactly the same job as they did when they were starting at the beginning of the crisis. That's why we've put a lot of resources into trying to create new opportunities, he said, which is just like, again i'm you know i prior to the lockdown i was playing you know every other weekend in some local bars and pubs here around so you know they weren't necessarily some of the most glitziest of um gigs that i was getting but they were fun enough there were great opportunities great little um side gigs that i was doing in order to supplement my income or just allow me to just go out and play some great music have a bit of a dance and have a good time but i can only imagine what it must be like for somebody that's actually a touring dj somebody that essentially pays their mortgage being able to play behind a pair of decks in some you know abandoned warehouse somewhere in the middle of stuttgart and not being able to do that now must really really hurt and then having to somehow come to the realization that you're having to what tr learn how to code um retrain yourself um apply for jobs in an industry that you've not even had any idea what's going on as for as much as we've complained about the um disconnected nature that some of these big djs have right especially with some of the business techno people can you imagine those people trying to get normal jobs they have no sense of what's going on in the real world and now they're having to suddenly navigate working with the regular schmegular people out there it's no surprise that they're trying their best to play at all these play grades right because they just have no idea like i'd imagine somebody like a Amelia lens probably doesn't even have a cv right you spent most of your time being a model in your younger age and now you've suddenly um you know um turned into a world touring dj for you suddenly now to put a cv together to work an office job makes completely no sense so i can definitely sympathize for those guys and girls out there who are essentially um paying their way through life working with the same industry and now you're being told to relearn or to kind of pursue other opportunities but unfortunately the really hard pill to swallow with covid is that it's impacted everybody 
no one is immune from this no one is sort of um no one is unaffected by it and in some way shape or form unfortunately the lower the down the rung you are the lower down the ladder you are um especially in terms of the entertainment industry you know especially if you haven't have you don't have savings or you don't have the ability you don't have the the name that's most of it because most of these playgrounds that you're seeing now you're seeing a lot of big name artists getting booked in these places right because naturally if you're a promoter and you have limited capacity you're not going to take a chance on up and coming people right we would have liked that to happen we would have that was the assumption that we all had at the beginning of covid we all thought oh this is going to be a great opportunity for all the up and coming artists to get a chance to play it's going to um change scenes it's going to allow you know because again for myself being a raver and going to different um cities across europe there's nothing more annoying than going to a city across europe going to a random city let's say you go to flipping prague to go see someone you go to a very well-known club in prague or something and then you end up seeing the lineup and it's just the same lineup you would have seen in the middle of london right same kind of people playing the same type of music you don't see any of the local talent you don't you don't even get to hear what they're really into as a scene in general especially if you're a tourist you don't you know and you don't go to record stores when you wash your day you just want to pop into a nightclub you don't understand you don't actually get uh, an understanding of what's going on in the underground it really is a bit um disconcerting to go somewhere and just see the same people playing right craig richards ricardo villalobos um you know sven va blah 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 it just gets a bit annoying so we would have all loved for covid to have been the punt the kick up the ass the thing needed in order to kind of change how clubs are booked and programmed but unfortunately um because of the limit capacity that some clubs have they just can't take the risk i understand it on their side especially if they're continuing paying rent especially if they get no government subsidies they have to ensure the events they're putting on are selling out and now they just don't want to guarantee it they book the top you know 50 rated people out there djs and they just book them and then everyone else is left basically scrapping right fighting for the scraps and that's essentially been part of if not the main reason why there's been so much um vitriol and so much anger directed to some of these business techno people on social media now don't get me wrong most of them especially with some of the you know back some of the sort of post and eulogies that went up when eric Miller died was sickening to say the least but i think most of the stuff that people have been annoyed with these guys have been mostly due to the lack of opportunities or fair opportunities being evenly spread out around the scene and it's going to be even worse now with less places open limit capacity and not enough funds in order to pay most of the people that are playing and now we have this you know especially in the uk you have rishi sunak essentially telling us hey if you're an entertainer or a dj you have to go and learn a new skill get in your occupation because your industry is completely fucked and i think most people again most sensible people probably knew this prior but it's obviously it probably is a bit disconcerting to see the government completely abandon our industry completely and just say hey you guys are on your own but it shouldn't be no surprise really i don't know tory government i never expected them to give a shit about nightlife i never expected them to give a shit about club culture i never expected them to give a shit about anything that we do in our little microcosm no matter how much money we kind of contributed to the overall uh, gdp or the overall revenue of london they were never going to see that they were never going to look at that as a necessary place to kind of get give any sort of attention to it was never going to happen and continue said um when asked specifically whether some of the uk's most fabulous musicians and artists and actors should get another job the chancellor suggested that there's still work available in the creative industry like what what's available i'm assuming agencies are probably low in work management companies uh production companies are probably null and void marketing teams are probably good budgets have completely been eviscerated there's nothing like even if again it's not to say that the industries can't function um sorry the industries cannot function without the people performing right they are by they are kind of hand they go hand in hand so you can't tell people in industry that are in front of the mic to somehow go behind the scenes but there's no scenes to go behind right i've heard of most agencies downsizing and to, if, if, they, if people want to follow they've all been let go and they've just basically got one person in the office sort of handling things so it's unlikely that they're now going to start hiring you know um superstar djs to come what and be what interns start photocopying stuff like it continues here it says um uh he said um can things happen in exactly the same way that it did no but everyone is having to find new ways to adapt and adjust to a new reality not you of course uh, he continues two weeks ago mr sunak launched a winter economy plan which designed to protect the tsunami of job losses but many in the creative industry feel that they were not protected by many of the new schemes asked whether the support is for the creative workers mr sunak pointed to a fifth 1.5 billion cultural recovery program which awarded cautious struggling businesses and self-employment support scheme so basically get get unemployment and that's it he created a new job support scheme which um, replaced a furlough scheme but said only people in the viable jobs will be able to use it so again useless to us 
Um, the furthest game, which was paid wages for more than 9 million people, finishes at the end of October and many people feel they've been unfairly left out on a new scheme. Annoying again. Much of the creative industries cannot reopen due to COVID-19 restrictions, meaning the businesses are currently unviable. Labour's deputy leader, Angela Rayner, said the Chancellor should not be should be working to support businesses which would be viable had it not been for coronavirus. So again, just a really, really, really shitty situation all around and um, best kind of summarised by this uh, tweet that I've seen here actually from some guy called Gabriel Satzan, who I think is a writer for Resident Advisor. He said the following, maybe the most depressing element of the UK's impending kill of all arts and music is that much of the summer was wasted on small issues and spats. And again, we'll come back to that term small issues because that caused a bit of an issue for him online, isn't it? With a certain segment of Twitter. So we'll come back to that. And it continues. Now when the government rolls in with bulldozers and no one has a strategy, language, tools or basic energy for the fight that matters. Very, very true. It continues. People in the music are rudderless, looking for an outlet for their grief and anger for being made obsolete. But it's hard to say that the dunking on each other, knocking on young people, going to parties, or kneecapping news outlets an effective shield for an existential Tory threat, which is true. And it's something I've, I've said, I think, prior. Some of my um, initial kind of anger towards people going out and partying dissipated quite quickly when I realised that there was no support for the club's institutions that I know and love. Then I completely understood why some people were willing to take the risk to go out some people are willing to take the risk to play in order to kind of you're going to get you know pushed back online and people are going to hate you for you know playing a play grave but i completely understood it from the customers and from the people that were performing people that perform need to obviously make an income and the people that are going need a release from this constant 24-hour doom i'm assuming no matter where you are in the world you turn on the news and it's constant people telling you about the numbers of people that are passing away due to this virus no economic plan no insight about when things can get better right just complete in a impending doom 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 so, so if you want to go out there and rave and party during a play grave that's essentially essentially you know unfortunately going to cause more damage than good i completely understand especially for the people that you know are under the age of 35 and think they're invisible that makes com invincible so that makes complete sense to me um continues here Willingly adopting the rhetoric effect and destructive um, tendencies, tabloids have played right into the game of divide and conquer, which is very true. The scene was completely split at the beginning. The business techno versus everybody else, um, the anti-protest people because between the protest people, the people complaining about BD just playing and not playing, people going to raves and not going to raves. It was a complete mess at the beginning. Now I think it's sort of settled down. I think everyone's realised we're all in the shit, which has been interesting because I think I remember seeing a flyer of a particular event with two NTS DJs playing an illegal party and i didn't see any backlash online about it so that's very interesting same people that were complaining about the Emily lenses and the nina kravitz going to playing play gravies had nothing to say when their friends were going to go play legal raves because guess what we're in october now people are hurting people need income it is what it is it continues here um without wanting to be too black pilled about it hard to avoid the fact that we're evidently holding a losing hand in this country sorry there's no happy conclusion it's fucked it continues i said also itv can you do one padding um do one padding this a new opportunity is in the headline it's a tactical eradication of one of the biggest industries in the country a lifeblood of millions one of only things that um they'd be still vaguely proud of as a nation craving simpering softball shit right and that's the original headline there. Um, which is certainly suggests musicians and artists should find new opportunities. But then I guess the government contacted ITV and told them to amend it. And then they amended it to this headline here. People of all walks of life, which is, you know, is, is what it is in terms of a term. But then it's interesting again to see, you know, this guy Gabriel essentially says um, the divide in the dance music scene essentially has led to us being unable to respond to the impending doom and to the lack of attention and care given to the Tory government to the our you know hospitality and nightlife industry, and then guess what happens when he uses the wrong phrase or he uses or he uses the wrong wording as he used here small issues and spats because I didn't think this was a big deal and I was wondering well, why is he getting so much backlash online and I realized oh some people interpreted him saying small spats and whatever it may be as him saying um what was it as him saying that uh black lives matter wasn't important and i guess uh frankie from disco woman uh disco woman sorry pulled him up and said the following you know in a very uh i'd say passive aggressive term tone 
what exactly are you considering a small issue or spat and then he highlighted because again i didn't realize what the issue was so i guess they got the assumption some people on social media got the assumption that he was essentially saying we were worrying about small issues such as black lives matter and police brutality and not looking at the bigger picture which wasn't what he was saying he was saying that we were looking at smaller issues as infighting within our own industry and sort of pointing fingers when we should have been trying to put a plan together in order to counteract whatever the Tory government were going to do in that industry but he explained to himself better he says small issues equals members of the public reporting pubs and venues with seven people around a table that was happening a lot a lot a lot of Karen snitching in pubs and people live in and around them which is I understand again people were scared and worried in the beginning but again you can't complain about your pub not reopening and not you being able to get a Sunday grub was it a Sunday roast when you were sent your snitching it says the following here calling the police on neighbors on park gatherings playing into the blame that neighbor tone purposely established by the Tories to cover their own failings and again you got a good headline here from the home secretary Priti Patel and yeah he continues um so a fairly kind of you know accurate kind of way to kind of explain yourself but unfortunately that wasn't enough and he still continued um saying the same thing going on and on about it trying to i, I, I guess he felt the pressure and he doesn't need to apologize for you know essentially being misunderstood you know you you say something and then somebody misunderstands what you say you don't need to apologize for it that's that's insane but he continues to say spat equals some people cheered on when the gov guardians uh news desk uh shared 100 jobs or when the critic on the bbc was tapped to be installed as the top of its structure because of existing issues of the outlets is destructive for to a free flow of information and change the story rule it says here from an entertainment perspective when the pandemic hit a few newsletters went around talking barely taking barely concealed delight in the mass wipeout of jobs ahead exactly right that and i can i think that one of them i think he's talking about might have been that first floor one or something as if the rebuilding job was pointless and it was deserved end of employment of a hundred thousands i found that really unsavory true and he continues and then of course frankie pipes in and says okay i think it's easy to do from your tweet that spats could mean any of the consoles again being really dismissive and kind of being a little bit rude in that respect um of the conversation that we had about race or misogyny again think about think about the issues that we're going through as a country think about the issues that we're going through as an industry or as a sector of the uk uh, you, know, you know economy and think about the underlying issues that have kind of superseded and up you know have come you know stuff that has entrenched and really need to be looked at and can't be sort of sorted out with a protest or two things that nearly need some real um examination of and think about what you were where you would lie in terms of your opinion of it especially if you're without an income for six months will you be really worried about these sort of issues unfortunately that's the state of affairs we're in because the government has been so blasé with dealing with corona they put up a position where no one necessarily cares about these issues that they probably should care about because they're unable to feed their kids because they're unable to pay their rent because they're unable to pay their mortgage because they're unable to travel to work because they don't have a work to go to in the first place so sometimes you know um, reducing everything to an issue of race or to an issue of power dynamics or patriarchy can be a little bit disingenuous and sort of disrespectful to the people that are just trying to go about their lives really and just trying to earn a living trying to work and trying to you know put food on the table and it continues to it says i think it's crucial to act to be accurate with what you're referring to like what just because you misunderstood what i said i don't have to be accurate about what i'm saying to you and again you know unfortunately he cucked himself out and said sorry i rushed into the thread as i was fucking furious about rishi is sorry uh, going to itv and telling town industries to get another job the summer extends way 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 beyond what i've tweeted here nothing about the issue you raised are small quite the opposite of course everyone knows it's quite the opposite we had two hundred thousand people complaining about a bloody dance routine on britain's got talent of course we've got issues here in the uk regarding race we all know that it's pretty evident um most people people that are you know um of a color that isn't caucasian who drive a nice car will tell you there's issues concerning race in the uk we know that's an issue but again are we going to deal with it in tandem with dealing with covid probably not we just need to pull our resources um use our time and our resources effectively and address things that we can address at a time that we can address it and then the other things we have to unfortunately leave for another time um and yeah but basically that's the case in the matter really in that respect um, an, an unsavory end to things in general um no real solution there for the nighttime industry we're essentially fucked with last place to reopen is essentially over for most places unless they've got an ability to um make money during a lockdown i guess for yourself if you're a dj and an artist you really unfortunately you do need to look for new opportunities because the government basically telling you to go fuck yourself that's the unfortunate um, effect of covid in the uk at the moment